greatly in the decision making expert Munz did an interview with the fireman department commander in Cleveland as part of a project to get professionals to talk about times when they had split second decisions the story of fireman told was about seemingly routine call he had taken few years before he was a lieutenant the fire was in the back of one story house in a residential neighborhood in the kitchen the lieutenant and his men broke down the front door laid down their hose and then as the fireman said charge the line dosing the flame in the kitchen with water something should have happened at that point the fire should have been less intense but it didn't so the man spread again still didn't seem to take much difference the man retreated back through the earth's way into the living room and there suddenly the lieutenant thought to himself there is something wrong returned to his men let's get out now he said in the moment after they left the floor on which they had been standing collapsed the fire it turned out had been in the basement he didn't knew why he ordered everyone out for the next two hours again and again the interviewer led the firefighter back over the events of the day in the attempt to document precisely what the lieutenant did and didn't knew the first thing was that the fire didn't behave the way it was supposed to clean told me that he always kept his ear flips up because he wanted to get a sense of how hot the fire is and he was surprised at how hot this one was kitchen fire shouldn't have been that hot what else often a sign of expertise is noticed what doesn't happen and the other things surprised him was the fire wasn't noisy and that didn't make sense given how much heat there was in retrospect all those particularities make perfect sense the fire didn't respond to being spread in the kitchen because it wasn't center in the kitchen it was quiet because it was muffled by the floor the living room was hot because the fire was underneath the living room and the heat raised at the time through the lieutenant made none of those connections consciously all of his thinking was going on behind the locked door of his unconscious this is a beautiful example of thin slicing in action hello everyone and welcome to habit wisdom this is the summary of the book called blink the power of thinking without thinking by malcolm gladwell who is the author of other international books like the tipping point outlier what the dog saw he was named one of the 100 most influential people by time magazine our brain uses two different strategies to make sense of the situation the first is the one we are most familiar with its conscious strategy we think about what we have learned and eventually come up with an answer history is logical and definitive but it's slow and it needs lot of information there is a second strategy do it operates a lot more quickly and it's really smart because it picks up the problem really quick almost immediately it has drawback however that it operates at least at first entirely at the surface of the consciousness it sends its message through really indirect channels such as the sweat gland of the palm it's a system in which our brain reaches conclusion without immediately telling us that it's really reaching conclusion the part of our brain that leads to conclusion like this is called the adaptive unconscious of this kind of decision making is one of the most important new field in psychology when you walk out into the street and suddenly realize a truck is bearing down on you and you don't have all the time to think through all your options of course not the only way human being could have ever survived as a species as long as we have is that we have developed all kind of decision making that is capable of a very quick judgment based on very little information the adaptive unconscious does an excellent job in sizing up the world warning people of danger setting goals 
and initiating actions in a sophisticated and effective manner. The author of this book talks about how a little bit of knowledge goes a long way in making our judgment. He explained the theory of thin slicing. The term thin slicing refers to the ability of unconscious to find patterns in situations and behaviors based on varying narrow slicing of experiences. Thin slicing is part of what makes the unconscious so dazzling, but it is also what we find most problematic about rapid cognition, how it is possible together with necessary information for a sophisticated judgment in such a short time. Then the answer is that when our unconscious engages in thin slicing. Imagine that you are considering me for a job. You have seen my resume and think that I have the necessary credentials, but you want to know whether I am the right fit for your organization. My hard work, my honestness, my open to new ideas in order to answer these questions about my personality, your boss gives you two options. The first is to meet me within twice a week for a year to have lunch or dinner or go to a movie with me to the point where you become one of my closest friends. Your boss is quite demanding. The second option is to drop by my house when I am not there. Spend half an hour or so looking around which would you choose. Pause this video and write down answers down in the comment below. Then continue the video. The seemingly obvious answer is that you should take the first option. The thick slicing. The more time you spend with me, the more information you gather, the better you are, right? As the psychologist Samurai Gosling has shown, judging people, personality is a really good example of as how surprising, effective thin slicing can be. He began his experiment by doing a personality workup on 8 college students. He called his experiment the Big Five Inventory. Highly respected multi item questionnaire that measures people across five dimensions. 1. Extraversion Are you sociable or retiring or fun loving or reserved? 2. Agreeableness Are you trusty or suspicious, helpful or uncooperative? 3. Consciousness Are you organized? or unorganized, self-disciplined or weak willing. 4. Emotional stability. Are you worried or calm, insecure or secured? 5. Openness to new experience. Are you orientative or down to earth, independent or dependent? Then Samurai had close friends of these 8 students and asked them to fill the same questionnaire. Whenever the friend ranks on Big Five, experimenter wanted to know how closely do they come up uh, true to the answer. It's not surprising that a friend can describe us fairly accurately. They have a thick slicing of experience with us. They know who we are and then when he repeated the same process, but this time he didn't call on close friends. He used Total strangers who had never even met the students. All they saw were the drum room. After they had 15 minutes to look around and answer series of basic questions about the occupant of the room on a scale of 1 to 5, they are not nearly as good as friends, but they top out on three trails. They were more accurate at measuring conscious and they were much more accurate in predicting both the students' emotional stability and their openness to new experience on balance. And then the strangers ended up doing much better job. What this suggests is that it is quite possible for people who have never met us and who have never spent time with us, who, who have spent only 20 minutes thinking about us to come up with a better understanding who we are than people who have known us for years. Forget the endless getting to know 
meeting and lunches then if you want to get a good idea of whether I would make a good employee drop by my home one day and take a look around please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more such videos hope you enjoyed the video if you do please make sure you hit the like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to like our facebook page link is in the down description below let me just conclude the video by saying the author discerns and discusses the art of human intuition and elaborate on how humans can by developing it to perfection be able to make quick yet accurate and effective decisions termed as snap judgment in the book the author elaborates by using situations how snap judgments can be more efficient than reason one which borders on deliberation go ahead and read this wonderful book which has tiny stories of our day to day lives snap judgment thank you for watching this video hope you like this video see you till the next video bye